time to listen to my presentation on the uh, Advanced Ocean Diver course, our newest course, and it's been released. A, it's been released for a couple of weeks now. Uh, you've probably seen the uh, slide just now, which explained that the presentation will be recorded, not just um, the actual presentation, but also the questions and answers because I think people who are unable to attend will obviously be interested uh, in listening to those later on. So for those of you who don't know me, I am the, uh, I'm Dominic Robinson, Head of Diving and Training. I've been in this role since November last year. Previously, I was the, I worked for the MOD as the officer in charge of the Joint Service Subaqua Diving Center, where we delivered uh, the full suite of BZAC courses and uh, instructor events to military personnel. And before that, I spent some time um, in the Army. I've been a BZAC member since 1991 and I've been an instructor since 1993, uh, one of the old club instructors. So, so I've been kind of around a while and, and I have um, you know, know a little bit about diver training. Um, I'm a member of the, the local club here in Plymouth, Plymouth Sound Divers. Uh, and I do an awful lot of, uh, of diving with them. So moving moving swiftly on, uh, the things I'm planning on covering this evening is first thing I think I'm going to cover is is why this course exists. Um, and obviously, there is a bit of controversy, and I think you know a few people have asked me um, about that. So so hopefully I'll, I'll cover that. We'll then talk about what the actual qualification entitles you to do, compare it to some of the other qualifications that we have, talk about how you get on the course or how people get on the course, what the course is going to contain, and then look at some training routes in and around Advanced Ocean Diver. And finally, I'm going to pick up on, on some concerns that I think people might have and concerns that have been uh, voiced to me. Uh, and hopefully I, I will address um things that you might be wishing to raise so moving on then why does this course exist well i don't think it's a particularly great secret that um we're trying to work more closely with with centers delivering commercial training and particularly uh we've got a project going on in egypt at the moment to try and um to, to have more uh, BZAC divers trained out there rather than you know other agencies and therefore in order to do that the, the information we were given was that we needed a course that competed with advanced open water um, and equivalents from, from different agencies um, so, so that's basically where it came from and with that came the requirement for e-learning which obviously speeds up the delivery of uh, training in uh, resorts and in holiday type conditions and we think with e-learning, this course you can deliver an ocean diver course in three days, and then another two days to the to do the advanced ocean diver. So therefore, somebody who goes on holiday in a resort or whatever can uh, can gain the qualification in five days. And also, the ratios um, are comparable with with similar agency courses. So therefore, from a commercial perspective, it's a course that they can that they deliver in a, a reasonable time frame give people the kind of qualification that they expect and isn't going to cost the centre more to deliver than comparable products from other agencies. And that, those are obviously really important things if you're operating in a, in, a, in a commercial environment. So that's where the course came from. And initially it was planned that only it would only be available through commercial centres. Now, I uh, used to be on uh, MDC uh, and my role there was as the, the technical chief examiner, so I had nothing to do with this. And I always used to laugh whenever this came up. It was originally called Ocean Diver Plus, and I had nothing to do it, with it. Then all, then all of a sudden, it became my job when I uh, when I started started the role. Uh, once once I became you know better informed about what it consisted of, I realised actually it was a, it was a qualification that had really really good utility for for our branches and. And therefore, you know, what we, we tried to do was, was make sure that it was available to branches, not just in, in commercial centres. And, and the real reason for that is because this is, I think anyway, an excellent interim step to sports diver. 
Sports Life is a fantastic qualification, as we all know. We all love it. It is it is a brilliant qualification. I don't think any other agency courses compare with it, but it is also quite a significant hurdle to get to get from ocean diver to sports diver. There's lots of training, there's experienced dives, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you've got to do the, the depth progression on top of it. By sticking advanced ocean diver in as this interim step. I believe it gives enhanced diving opportunities for people within the within the training program, and hopefully, you know, what that does is keep so that them focused. So there is, you know, I've seen quite a few people drop out between ocean diver and sports diver. So hopefully, this will reduce, um, you know, the, the number of people who who give up rather than rather than stay the distance, and therefore, hopefully, get more people to progress to sports diver because they have enhanced diving opportunities and people within branches are more enthusiastic about going diving with them than they might otherwise be with a uh, an ocean diver. So I think it's a great opportunity for branches. Um, and I'll explain why. So, so basically, what does the qualification give you? Well, an advanced ocean diver can do, obviously, exactly you know, everything that an ocean, an ocean diver can do. So they can be, you know, be buddied down to 20 metres. They can dive with another advanced ocean diver to 30 meters and they can use nitrox up to 36 percent however there is some restrictions on that so the first thing is we think they need a more experienced diver with them for the for the, for the slightly deeper aspects so the 20 to 30 meter dives they can't do decompression um, they've got to be in conditions that they've already encountered otherwise they need to dive with a dive leader and obviously they need surface cover and it needs to be within safe diving recommendations, which is obviously what you'd expect. So if we if we put that onto a table, um, comparing some of the kind of key key things which dictate what divers can do, obviously max depth, nitrox, whether they're guided, rescue skills and decompression. So I'll stick up an ocean diver there and you can see we're all familiar with that, I'm sure. Um, great, great qualification, bedrock of our our kind of you know low level training uh, but obviously has quite a lot of limitations sports diver as i've already said great qualification but quite a big jump all of a sudden you, you've got the full suite of rescue skills and uh, you can do mandatory decompression if you choose to and you can go to 35 meters if you you achieve the the post qualification depth regression which obviously takes uh, a minimum of three dives so AOD sits in between that as a, a kind of nice halfway house, I would say. Um, and that's obviously exactly you know, what, what was hoped to achieve with the, with the qualification. So that's, that's what they can do. And I'm sure we, we you know, might pick up in questions, um, expand a bit more on that, but that's the, the, the outline. So how do you become a uh, advanced ocean diver? Well, Obviously, we would hope that uh, that everyone becomes an ocean diver first of all, and can then go straight from an ocean diver onto an advanced ocean diver. The rea reality, of course, is that um, the world isn't quite that neat. So, therefore, we're looking at other agency equivalents, and you know, Paddy Open Water or you know, other agency, the same name. Um, they need either a nitrox qualification or to do the uh, the nitrox workshop. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Nitrox workshop, it was originally conceived when the Ocean Diver course changed in 2007 to include Nitrox and was a way for people to kind of to, to, to catch up. Um, it's fairly straightforward. It's one theory lesson with a theory assessment. Now, that's not currently available as e-learning, but it, it will be shortly. And we're in the process of, um, of revamping it. So it will, it will look better and it will be available as e-learning um, and hopefully that will be done in the, the not too distant future so that's how, how you start the course there is a clear route in you know regardless whether you're another agency or whether you're uh, one of our divers what does the actual course consist of well uh, obviously you've got to have a bit of theory so there's four theory lessons those are available as e-learning but they're also available in the instructor materials area of the website as powerpoints and instructor manuals. So if, if you want to deliver them face to face or you want to deliver them uh, electronically, as, as obviously people have been doing a lot recently, you can do that. They're, they're there for you. 
In terms of the practical, then there's an optional skills refresher lesson, and that's very similar to the, the one from Sports Diver. And it's there if, if people are, you know, say transferring from uh, warm water to cold water, or if they're, uh, they haven't dived for a while, you can, you can do that with them, take them in the water and kind of get a feel for where they are. There's also two open water lessons. Uh, one of them is an SMB lesson, the other is a, a DSMB lesson. Then there's two depth progression dives. Now these are actually part of the course rather than something you do post-qualification. And one's 25 and one's 30 meters. And then there is a compass lesson. Now the compass lesson can be done as part of either of the, the four dives above. Um, you, you build it into uh, whatever program works for you, or you can do it as a separate dive, you know, entirely up to you. Um, we give you the flexibility to decide how you want to deliver it. And our belief is because of uh, the fact it is four dives, the practical can be delivered in two days. So obviously, if you're going to need to do the skills refresher lesson or you want to do the compass lesson as a separate um, as a separate lesson, then you can do that. Um, I've just seen um, uh, a question pop up there. But the question is whether you could do the compass lesson as part of a depth progression dive. I suspect that all depends on where you're doing your depth progression dive. If you can, you know, go and touch the bottom and then come up to a relatively shallow area, perhaps in, in a quarry or something similar to that, then, um, you know, I, I don't think that's beyond the realms of possibility. But the reality is you, you, you choose this depending on your particular situation, your circumstances. So um, in terms of routes, now, I'm going to give you a, a couple of different options, really, and you can you can choose which one of those suits your circumstances or your training circumstances best. So the first uh, the first route is um, there you go. You, you're an ocean diver. You buy an advanced ocean diver pack, which costs you twenty pounds, and then you become qualified as an advanced ocean diver, and you then decide you want to be a sports diver. Another twenty pounds for the pack, and um, Bingo, there you are. 40 pounds later, you um, you hopefully are a sports diver. Uh, there's e-learning options um, if you want to do them. And these are all uh, digital packs. So uh, you might go, oh, I don't like digital packs. And that's fine. There is a, a non-digital pack available, um, a non-digital option available that, that basically costs the same, uh, the same amount. What I would say, though, is the advantage of digital is that we can update stuff relatively quickly. So if people identify typos or we decide we want to make changes, then we can amend those. And then the next people uh, are addressed for the next person who does the course. Um, we've recently done that with a couple of our courses. Um, some of the, the CCR courses have, have had a couple of amendments based on feedback that we've got from people. And that's gone straight into the instructor manual and the the student manuals that are available to download. Um, in terms of administration, um, there are QR, QRB inserts in the student manual, so there is something for people uh, they can print out and that can be signed and they can stick in their QRB. And also the student manuals have the URNs that you can use for awarding the qualifications through the, the normal process on the website. So, so that's how you administer the, uh, the, the course. And people who've used other digital packs will be, I think, familiar with, with some of those processes. Um, the alternative route, if, if, um, if that doesn't suit you, is to carry on with the, with the route that we've, uh, you know, everyone's been using up until now, which is uh, you buy an ocean diver sports diver pack. That's priced uh, at 40 pounds. Uh, there's an e-learning option, should you wish it. And you can either have that as a physical pack or a digital pack depending on, on what, uh, what suits yourself. Um, so that hasn't changed. And if, if people don't like Advanced Ocean Diver, there's no requirement for you to do it. You can just crack on to Sports Diver with your trainees, as has always happened. Um, <clears throat> what may happen, of course, is, is that people may decide on the route to Advanced Ocean, uh, to Sports Diver rather, that they want to become an Advanced Ocean Diver. Well, we've also considered that as well. So um, if people want to do that, then what we have is a, um, 
the payment required form, which is which is that one there. It's a small fee that covers um, administration and the issue of a cue card uh, for AOD. And uh, by completing that form, it also notifies us that the that the, the training is happening. Um, we also need the instructor to, to complete the AOD form there, which confirms that they've, they've done it. So the student has done it, um, and that prevents people claiming qualifications that they, uh, they, they don't have or they haven't done the training for. And both of those are available on the website. There's also a um, uh, document on the website in the instructor area that explains how you qualify a, a sports diver uh, en route as an advanced ocean diver. And if, if that's not clear or, or needs amending or whatever, then uh, then please let me know. And, and obviously, we'd be keen to do that. And uh, all of this stuff, I'm really I'm really keen to get any feedback that anybody might have. Once we've got that form, obviously, we issue the cue card, and uh, and also we we remind the student of the limitations of their qualification. So that's that's the current alternative route. Now we um, we obviously appreciate that there's lots of people out there who have sport diver packs right now and um, may decide that they want to um, become uh, an advanced ocean diver uh, en route. And, you know, that's great. We'd love to you know, see people doing that. So they've already got a sport diver pack and basically they go through exactly the same process as the one that I've, I've just explained. Um, and the, the form on the website uh, explains how you do that. No requirement, people don't have to do that if, if, if they don't want to, it's just there as an option if it, if it suits. Uh, suits people and clubs and those kind of things. So, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to compare the routes, and I've got I've got a lovely table there that will probably test uh, people's eyesight. Um, so the three different routes I've just talked about there. So um, that's the the cost of things up until now. So sport diver pack was thirty two pounds fifty. Um, and, and people may have paid that before that sports diver packs have been cheaper than that. So therefore the, the route to sports diver was, um, was 75 pounds um, with the payment required form. If people wanted to be advanced ocean divers, that would be the cost to AOD. The, the route to AOD through the, the first method that I've just talked about is, is there. So it's your, your OD pack plus your AOD pack. And then if you want to become a sports diver, then, then that's how much it costs you. And the other alternative route is, is shown there with the, the cost to AOD there. So obviously uh, it makes sense for anybody who actually wants to be an AOD to kind of go down the left hand of those two routes. Um, but the, the cost to sports diver, regardless of which route you take there, it is the same, um, the, the two you know, the routes that's the two routes that are currently available. So I hope that's relatively relatively clear there. In terms of concerns, um, <laughs> obviously the biggest concern uh, that's been mentioned to me quite a lot is is the name. And um, I was an advanced diver for I don't know 20 years, something like that. And my experience of being an advanced diver is whenever I turned up at a commercial centre on holiday, I would it would I told them I was a BZAC advanced diver. They instantly assumed that I was a, an advanced open water diver, and you know knew relatively little. Um, I then had to go through a fairly lengthy process of explaining to them that I wasn't, and you know the things that I'd done, etc. And I think you know we have to accept that the world has the world has agreed that advanced in a diving sense means something different to what we think it, it means. Now, that doesn't mean we're getting rid of advanced diver um, and it will endure for, for a while. But I think when we go through the process of reviewing advanced diver, um, we haven't really started yet, that yet, the, the name will change. And I'm happy to accept suggestions. Um, but, but we do need a different we do need a different name that possibly you know better reflects what it is and is is coherent with um, what the rest of the world thinks as well. So I know that won't satisfy anybody, everybody, um, and, and and people will have strong views on this. And 
Um, you know, I'm sorry for people who are upset, but the, the fact is that we needed to to be commercially competitive. The feedback from every commercial centre we spoke to was this had to be called a Vance Ocean Diver. Um, you may you may consider that there hasn't been any consultation about this, and that it's a purely commercially driven decision. Well, to a certain extent, you know, I've already been up front with you and explained that it was a commercially driven decision. That that is true. Having said that, it has been discussed extensively at NDC, and it's been brought up in, in cap with council and um, regional coaches. You know, uh, towards the end of the process, have been involved as well, and so that there has been there has been discussion about it by the people that we elect as our representatives, or the people that are selected as our representatives for things like uh, for, for NDC. And, and what I would say is that bringing it away from being a purely commercial um, qualification. I think it has given lots of given, you know, gives lots of potential benefits for clubs. And I really, I think there's, there's a real opportunity for people there. So um, I guess the other concern that's been raised is, is with this qualification, why would anybody bother progressing to sports diver? Now, I, I guess the first thing is we see lots of people coming in with with similar qualifications to this into our organisation. So, Paddy Advanced Open Water Divers um, or similar, and you know a lot of them are very keen to progress and and do move on to sports diver. And I think the fact is that once you've been an advanced ocean diver and you've got to thirty metres, you will see the benefits that um, you know being able to do mandatory decompression or the benefits of um, being able to uh, go a little bit deeper or the benefits of you know, understanding how to rescue people or you know, starting down the route of being a dive manager. I think that, that those things will um, attract some people, you know, most people really, to progressing on sports diver. And we've always had people who, who stop at different levels. So um, you know, I, I think that's, that's kind of normal in any, uh, in any club. So I hope that that uh, so just to bring us to, to, to kind of a conclusion there, it is, a, it is a commercially competitive course. And the one thing I've not put on that slide is obviously the putting nitrox in it is something that is a probably is something I don't think that any other uh, agencies have. So therefore, that makes our course slightly unique and therefore hopefully more attractive. Um, the, uh, but it is, I think, a really good interim step for people to progress to sports diver and we think it's particularly liked, likely to be attractive to those who are you know relatively time poor I suspect we probably all feel that way but but that's people who can't dedicate as much time to their diving as they might like to and therefore we're going to take um, a lot longer to get to sports diver by achieving something you know en route to that we hope that it will keep them focused and keep them engaged and, and because of that we think it it, um, it does give clubs uh, lots of benefits. So um, I'm going to move on to, to questions there. Now, I think probably the easiest thing is if, if people put up their hands um, using the system and then I'll, I'll, you know, I'll hopefully I'll take you one at a time and, and I'll get back to you. So um, I'm, I'm going to go with, with Richard, first of all, if that's fine. Yeah, hi there. Uh, is there a strict order that the lessons must be delivered in for advanced open water? Um, that's um, I, I'm going to have to pick you up because I think it's going to happen a lot. Advanced ocean diver is 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 is, is what we're going with. Um, but the, the um, yeah, no worries. There are, it, clearly some lessons have got to follow each other. So the the DSMB lesson has to follow the SMB lesson, and the thirty meter one has to follow the twenty five. Now, currently the um, the manual stipulates that people have to do both the SMB and the DSMB before they start the. The, the 25 meter which is what i, I was think, for all right thank I, you i think we're going to change that oh okay um and, and and that's something i did this webinar this morning to um to some of the centers and the feedback from them was was they think we should uh we should um you know modify that to give them a bit more flexibility so that is something we're going to uh we're going to look to do right my, my concern is if i can uh bring to the point is if we allow them to go straight to depth progression, is they will just do the depth progression and then disappear, and not yeah, I mean, of course. What I would say is, is they won't have the qualification. 
a so group, but you'll have ocean divers running around doing 30 meter dives saying i've done it before well then you know i think the um oh, sorry david white i can see you've got your hand up i'll come to you next if that's okay um just so you don't keep your hand up forever <laughs> um so yeah i mean i guess uh you know people using things that they might have seen once and not um you know not getting the qualification for is 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 you know potentially a problem with any sort of diver training um, yeah. yeah and you know you cannot you, you cannot completely police that what i would say is is that i would hope you know within the structure of our branches where we have dive managers we have uh, diving officers we have training officers those kind of people that, that you would you would you know manage your training and your trainees appropriately yeah okay good presentation thank you very much no worries cheers for your question richard appreciate that um sorry david white i, I did promise you that, that you could go next hi dom you're all right one question i've got to ask is um what's happened to the rescue skills i mean that's bzac's courses that's what bzac's you know what was all about the rescue skills we know we we're doing for ocean diver sports diver advanced diver Diver, they've all got rescue skills in. This he's got no rescue skills in. And do you think it's good that somebody's going to go straight down to 30 metres? And I'm talking about diving in British waters, not diving in the Maldives. Yeah, OK. Uh, uh, I mean, for those for those who don't know, I, I do most of my diving in British waters. I, I learned to dive here and, you know, I absolutely get your point. Um, rescue skills are, are a really important part of, of what we do. And, um, you know, I think it's important to recognise that we do more rescue skills at ocean diver level than other agencies. Um, there are plenty of people from other agencies who are you know, diving safely and successfully in British waters with, with less rescue skills than we give somebody in, for, for an ocean diver. Um, so the kind of the precedent is, is there, but I think that's also, you know, we try and we mitigate that by having our structures, you know, our, our branch structures, our dive managing structures, by also saying that we want this person to go in the water with a sports diver. So, you know, that's part of the part of the mitigation for this. Um, what I would say, though, is, is if you as a, um, a, you know, a diving officer or a dive manager, sorry, I don't know what your particular role in a club is, you know, if you feel that this is not for you and you can't do your diving safely with somebody who has this level of qualification then there is you know no you know no requirement for you to do it or you can put in you know additional safety measures whatever you think is appropriate for the diving that you do oh that's fair enough but if somebody comes to the club who's been stuck in say i don't know the azores somewhere I come back with a an advanced ocean diver ticket and he wants to come diving with our club where do we stand well, I mean, that's that's your decision as, as a club, isn't it? I mean, what I would say is the well, first I'd thing is... Yeah, I'd make him do a rescue skills test to 15 metres at least, personally. Okay. I mean, obviously, um, he wouldn't have been trained to do that. So I would I would hope that before you, you do that, you would actually, you know, train them to do that. Um, the, the thing I would suggest is, is a great way of uh, introducing people from uh, warm water to cold water is uh, via the refresher, the skills refresher that I've talked about. And, you know, that, that's also something hopefully you would do with somebody who has started sports diver training as well. And that does cover um, some of the, the, the basic rescue skills. Yeah, well, that is sports diver training, not advanced open ocean diver. You know, it's so, uh, I don't so know, the, I, just think we, I just think this is all geared up for commercial, same as you said from the start. I don't think it's got any benefits for the clubs at all, personally. I can't see where the clubs are going to benefit from this at all. Um, some people will, will absolutely have that view, and, and I respect I respect your you know that as your um, perception. Other people have, have have given me very different feedback. So um, you know, as I say, there is the option to do whichever routes you want. And if you get an advanced you know advanced ocean diver coming to you, and you only want to to dive them under the restrictions that there are for an ocean diver, you can you know as a diving officer or, or the dive manager, you could certainly do that. Um, them anyway. Good presentation, by the way. Oh, thank you, and thank you for your question. And you know, I think the reality is, is not everybody is going to agree with that. We, we, un, you know, we know that, and it's not going to be suitable for every club. Um, and we understand that as well. The option is there to use it if you, if you want to. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, I think Ant Tiernan, who had his, who's had his hand up the longest. Hi, Dom. 
Uh, I think most of the people we get joining us now are either coming to us as Paddy Open Water or Advanced Open Water. Does this now bump up the crossover for the advanced ones to this level? Oh, I, 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 I had a wager on with myself how long it was going to take till I had that question. So I should probably have covered it in the presentation. <laughs> um, so, so the issue of equivalence is obviously a really important one because of the, the point that you make there. So um, <clears throat> we've had a good look at uh, advanced open water. And, and how it compares. And, and we basically believe because of the, uh, particularly the lack of nitrox, we, um, and, and the unfamiliarity with, with our tables and procedures, we think it um, still remains the equivalent of ocean diver. Now, having said that, both sports diver and advanced ocean diver in the instructor manual, have got um, information for instructors that says, if you get somebody coming in with a qualification, where you believe that they've been trained for elements of the course, you can make a make a judgment about that, and maybe miss out parts of the parts of the syllabus. So a good example would be if you get an advanced um, open water diver who has done a thirty meter dive already, there is very little point in them doing the twenty five and the thirty meter dives because they've already covered it, unless you feel that they've done it in you know, uh, blue water overseas, and therefore it would be appropriate for them to do it in UK conditions. But that would, you know, very much depend on the, on the individual and their circumstances. Yeah, we have had, not exactly issues, but, but people who've, who've done the advance who've said, like, you're only considering me as an open water diver, even though I've got more experience and, and more training. So it, it is a bit of a sticking point for some people. But uh, I mean, we've even had one person who's gone away rather than doing the entire sports diver course, gone away and done the paddy rescue diver and then crossed directly over. Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest, you know, I think it's, it's the comes back to the point that we discussed earlier on is, is that not everybody is going to agree with every decision. Not mm -hmm. every, you know, not every route is going to be appropriate for everybody. And, you know, when you get into these interagency complexities of different qualifications, it's, it's, it's very difficult to be, uh, you know, to be exactly equivalent and also to keep everyone happy. So um, that's, I think, the, the decision that we've made is, is appropriate. But also we, we have given you as instructors or diving officers the flexibility to, to, to look at individual circumstances. So how, how does this map across to the CMAS star ratings? Ask me on that, Anne, or, or are you happy? Sorry? Sorry, I, I I think I just lost it there. Do you, do you want to come back to me on, on that at all, or, or are you happy? All right. I, I had another question, but uh, just about uh, how it maps across the CMAS star ratings. So um, I wasn't expecting that question. What I would say is the, the, there is an equivalence table on the website that I think has the CMAS star ratings on there. If that's not the case, um, uh, and you don't feel that it covers what you require, uh, drop us drop us an email. It's uh, it's Dom R at bzac dot com, and I'll and I'll get you a written answer. Right. So so that's been updated for this new qualification, has it? Yeah. It has. Yeah. Okay. I'll. Uh... It doesn't look very. It doesn't look very different, but it has been slightly updated. Yeah. I'll go and have a look at that. Thanks very much. No worries at all. Thank you. Cheers for your question. Uh, so I'm looking at people with with a hand up next. The the next one I've got there is uh, Andy Walters. Hi, Adam. You're right. Um, thanks for the presentation. Thanks for clearing a few things up. Um, I just wanted to ask um, how this affects people that want to go to be an instructor. So we've got a few people that are sort of ocean divers that are coming and are in about perhaps going for the IFC um, and are considering doing sports diver. If you do advanced open, sorry, advanced <laughs> ocean diver, <laughs> I have to get used to that one. Um, is that a bar to do in the IFC? Will they have to do? What I'm thinking is, is if I've got to tell them they've got to do another course on top of that to start the instructor, is, uh, has this been considered being a barrier to becoming an instructor or not? Yeah, so, so the, the, the entry level for IFC remains sports diver, and it's because of the point that was made earlier on about rescue skills. You know, we need people who are t training people to be competent at, at rescue. Um, and so, so we're, we're not going to lower it, no, lower it below that. I mean, I would, for the for the kind of people who say this is two courses, actually, I would try and encourage them to consider it as as one course delivered in slightly more bite sized chunks. And, and as we all know, as in, as instructors, 
you know, progression, you know, make, breaking things into, into progressive, easily digestible steps is exactly what we should be trying to do. And, you know, for me, that's what this, this uh, new qualification does. Yeah, no, that's great. And, and then just one follow-up question. That I was, I, I, unfortunately, my internet blipped out. The storm's been killing my uh, telephone wires here. Um, with the twenty pounds for the um, the twenty pounds for each course, but then, then it just blipped out just as it come through, saying something about the the twelve fifty for the for the card. Does that mean that the course, is, if in reality, if you're doing advanced open, advanced, keep saying it again, advanced ocean diver, um, it's thirty. The, the real cost is thirty two. The total cost is thirty two. No, that that twelve pounds fifty is for people who are doing it who have a sports diver pack. So we're going from ocean diver to sports diver, and want ah, to get want a step back. Yeah, ah, got you. Yes. No, that, oh, that's that's it. They want to get it. They want to get it on route, basically. Yeah. No, that's fine. No, that clears that up. Thank you very much, Tom. Cheers. No worries, Andy. Thank you, uh, Seb. I've I've got you up next. I think. Hi, Dom. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, <laughs> I think there's been enough uh, chatted about the advanced uh, thing, so I'll, I'll leave that for the time being. Um, coming from years of Paddy, then crossing over to BZAC, and then eventually ditching Paddy altogether, my question is, uh, sorry if it's a bit naive, but why are the, the commercial centres driving this? W what is it that BZAC as a whole is needing to achieve? Yeah, I mean, so... so I'm going to be honest. That's um, that's slightly outside my pay grade, but um, <laughs> the you know we uh, we at headquarters we work for council, as you probably aware. Council obviously elected by all of us as BZAC members, and the strategy that has been produced by council is um, is that we need to um, is that we need to build our centre network, and we all know that that, that um, membership. Of the organisation is uh, is is in decline, or has been in decline historically, and um, you know it's felt that a way of addressing that and a way of keeping our organisation sustainable is by you know having more of our courses delivered in commercial centres, and you know I don't think anybody wants to pay more for our membership fees. We all want you know less membership fees, frankly. So if we can if we can have if rather than you know somebody going to a centre and getting a paddy course. If they go and get a, a BZAC course, and that keeps our membership fees low, or, or reduce our membership fees, or, or improve the, the quality of our products, or you know those kind of things, that's got to be a good thing, hasn't it? Yes, if in fact it does improve the quality, and that's kind of where I'm on the fence about this. On the, the part of me that taught Paddy for nine years is thinking, great, an intermediate step that would be useful for people who maybe want to jump on a you know, 650 pound Northern Rex and Red Sea liverboard at 30 meters and they don't need to go. So that part of it, I'm sort of happy with. My concern is where this might take us. My, my reason eventually for leaving the sort of more commercial sector of it was that I saw businesses driving down standards. The sort of ultimate expression of that for me within Paddy, and I'm not, this, this is my personal opinion, this is not uh, representing anyone else, was when they got to uh, this thing called elite instructor status, which eventually, which effectively turned instructors into competitive certifiers. And I, from firsthand experience, I've seen that absolutely drive down the standards of diver education. So I'm not saying that's going to happen here. I see the, the Advanced Ocean Diver Program as being an intermediate step. I see some people here have been talking about the old, um, <clears throat> I don't know if it was Club One, Club Two, or Novice One system that that actually took place long before I joined BZAG. But my concern, more broadly, and I, I guess this is, as you said, above uh, your pay grade, maybe a question for HQ, is where this takes us as an organisation, um, because I've seen com commercial pressures have detrimental effects on diver education, and the reason why I crossed over to BZAG is because I was trying to get away from that. Yeah, yeah, and that's a reasonable concern. I wouldn't necessarily take that up with HQ. We're, we're the kind of uh, we're the we're the servants of of uh, the organisation. You know, mm. we, we work for you effectively. So this is a strategy that we've been given by council. You know, if you if you disagree with that strategy or you think it's the wrong one, there's always a shortage of people standing for council. Um, or you know, <laughs> historically there's not been that many. So you know, put yourself forward and you know, um, you know. 
make make that change if you if you think it's uh, if you think it's important. All right. Thank you very much for uh, your time, Dob. Yeah, no worries, all said. Uh, appreciate your appreciate your comments and your kind of you know your views and your experiences. I think that's useful for us to to hear from people who've come up through different routes. I was a novice too, by the way, so maybe I should uh, I should declare that <laughs> declare that interest in there. I'm I'm not seeing any other hands going up there. So if any other, anybody else has got any questions, then oh yeah, back to uh, David White again. Just a quick one, Dom. I don't think it's quite fair that uh, somebody going from Ocean Diver to Sports Diver has to pay a lot more money as well. They don't. Yeah. The, to go from Ocean yeah. Diver to Sports Diver, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 90, 90, it's 95 quid, mate. 90, 90, I'm going by your table. Put your table back up. Uh, 90, 92 pounds 50. So it's it's the... We yeah, have it's, more expensive, it's more expensive doing straight Sports Diver readers doing the Advanced Open Diver. Ocean, uh, advanced ocean diver. No, it's the it's the same it's the same price. It's eighty two pounds fifty. Put your slide up, please. I'm sure it was ninety odd pound. Yeah, ninety five pound ocean diver to sports diver, ninety five pound. No, cost to sport diver is the is the, is the is the middle line. Right. Okay. If you want to become an advanced ocean diver on route, it is it is more expensive to go that way. Yes, but to sports diver, yeah, it's exactly because you've got to pay that twelve pound fifty required. If you Surely, when you buy a, when you buy your pack for a sports diver, you'll get your your card come to part of that price anyway. Surely. No, no. I think you, you you're misinterpreting my uh, my table here, David. So the cost of sports diver for, for either of these two routes is eighty two pounds fifty. Yeah. If you want to be an advanced ocean diver, en route to sports diver, that's when you pay the extra. Top All right, they go back. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, they go back. Yeah, they go back top. Yeah, I understand that now. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. No, yeah. cool. But right, to be honest, month, like. no, no, no. If if you if 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 clearly I didn't make that as clear as I should have done on my presentation. So um, so thank you for bringing it up. Uh, I've got down. one more there. Sorry, I've got Kevin Holmes. Yeah, Dom, can you hear me? I, I can. Yeah. Uh, okay, mate. Um, I just want to clear up this um, buddy pairing thing that you said. You said that an advanced ocean diver can dive with another advanced ocean diver. And then you said there has to be a sports diver as well. So an advanced ocean diver has really got to dive with a sports diver. So below between 20 and 30 metres, yes, you are correct. So if you didn't have a sports diver to accompany two advanced ocean divers, they would be restricted to 20 metres, even though they've done their 30 metre depth progression and all that one Yes, that is correct. Okay. And an advanced open diver, an advanced ocean diver with a sports diver still have to be um, supervised by a dive manager. Is that yes. And, and that's that's the same for all our, all yeah. our diving, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's clear up what I wanted. Thanks. No worries, Tom. Thanks for your question. No problem. Um, I've got uh, Anne there. Sorry, I don't know you. I don't know your surname. Sorry, I'm Anne Bailey. Um, I'm 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 a little concerned. Um, I mean, I, I I don't want to be too negative because I think the step between ocean diver and sports diver is a jolly good idea. I'm just a bit concerned about how um, branches like ours are to manage the situation when you get somebody who perhaps has done either an ocean diver i mean i don't know up until now has ocean diver been available over abroad abroad um you know in, in centers okay. abroad just to come back uh, with an ocean diver because i we've had plenty of people come through with open water but um i've ne i've not up until now had anybody come through with with um ocean diver um and if we do have people coming in with ocean diver or advanced ocean diver, uh, which they've done in five days abroad, um, how do we how do we um, integrate them into our ordinary branch where most of the diving is British waters, farms? Um, and I'm just a bit concerned, you know, sending a, an advanced ocean diver who's done this course, sending them down with a sports diver. What, what happens if the sports diver has an injury or something? You know, the, the, the advanced ocean diver is, is from 30 metres has got to be able to rescue the, the sports diver who's, who, was, who was leading them, but 
um, is perhaps the one that's incapacitated. It, it just, I, I'm just concerned about how we're going to uh, manage these people who are basically having got a lot of experience uh, and are going to come into the branches. Yeah, and and those are those are those are very reasonable concerns. I, th I think you've raised there, Anne. Um, so I kind of there's a couple of different questions. I, th I think you or a couple of different things you raised there. So the first thing is, uh, are ocean divers being trained overseas in the same way that say um, open water or advanced ocean, open water divers are? Then the answer to that question is is yes, um, but but probably not very many, which is why no. you might not why you might not have seen any. Um, uh, obviously. We, We'd like um, more people to be trained as ocean divers rather than open water divers, but that's uh, that's what that's um, you know one of those things. Um, in terms of how do you deal with somebody who's only dived in warm water and is therefore uh, and is coming back to the UK? Well, um, I think that's that's the same issue regardless of what agency they've, they've been trained with. So all agencies have a stipulation, something along the lines of the qualification is valid for the um, conditions into which they've learned to dive. That's the same for ocean diver. It's the same with advanced ocean diver. It's the same with open water. It's the same with advanced open water. So all qualifications have the expectation that when the, the situations change, then additional training or additional supervision is required. So um, classically, that is one of the roles of the dive leader qualification to do that. So um, me, if I was in your position and I had a ocean diver or advanced ocean diver come back who'd been trained in Egypt or Malta or somewhere like that, I would be looking to put them in the water with probably an instructor for the first dive, somewhere shallow, run through all the skills that you would expect them to be able to do, mass clearing, DV ditch and retrieve, you know, maybe a um, some alternate source. You know, those kind, of, maybe a CBL, um, all those kind of things. And then, once I would then expect them to to start, you know, going progressively deeper, accompanied by a dive leader who can who has the skills and knowledge to uh, to kind of keep an eye on them. So that's, I guess, the second question. <laughs> the third question I think you raised was about. <laughs> No, no, it's okay. I mean, it's really good because, you know, the whole point of this webinar is to kind of tease through these things. And, and if you've asked yeah. it, lots of other people, I'm sure, are thinking it. So um, the next uh, one is, you know, is, is about rescues. So, um, you know, two ocean divers can dive together to 20 metres. Their, their own rescue training is relatively limited. I think we, we all agree on that one. Um, what we're now doing is taking somebody who's done a bit more diving um, but no more rescue skills and putting them with a higher grade of diver going down to 30 meters. So, you know, for me, this whole thing is, is, a, is about a balance of risk. So the, the, the people like me and various other people who've constructed this course believe, you know, we've all got tons of experience of diving in the UK. Um, we believe that the, um, the risk involved in that with the other um, mitigating factors that we have in place are adequate that that is that is a risk we're willing to tolerate now you as a as diving officer you as a dive manager you as an instructor you may decide that for your particular student and your particular circumstances that's not appropriate and you know that's entirely fine you know please please make those decisions you know that's why you have got that higher level of training that's why you've got that higher level of education to, to absolutely you know, make those judgment calls okay yeah it's it, i mean I, I just i just feel that quite a lot of pressure is being put on what is potentially uh could be put on the um the as you say the more advanced people within within a branch um from, i mean we know we know how some people can be a bit you know shirty about if you if you won't let them do what they think they're they're qualified to do and it's putting pressure on 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 the on the the officials of the club to to have to make these decisions which which could be could be a problem i think but we still have to see how it goes won't we yeah absolutely and um you know i, I kind of uh, maybe i shouldn't say this but my own club has had um in the last few years we've had um two facilities um uh, one of them in 6 meters of water and you know so so you know i'm i'm really mindful of the kind of 
um, you know, the risks involved in, in all diving, but also um, in, you know, the kind of pressures that people feel themselves under. And, you know, there's no doubt at all that, that sometimes saying no is quite difficult. What I would, what I would say, though, is, is um, you need to make, you know, you need to make good judgment calls. And if you need support in that, and if you, somebody's questioning your judgment and you want support from, say, headquarters or you want support from me in my role, then, you know, I've just given you my email address and I'm happy to give it again to anybody else who wants it. And I'm happy to, to kind of, you know, offer that kind of support and say, no, no, you know, that's a reasonable judgment given the, given the circumstances. Okay. Thank you. That's good. Yeah, no problems yeah. at all. And thank you for your question. I can see you've got your hand up there, David. I'm going to come back to you, but I'm going to give uh, Sergey a, a yeah. go first of all. Uh, good evening, Dom. Thank you for your presentation. I have a quick question about nitrox. So ocean divers can use up to 36 nitrox, but they must land their dive like using air. Is it the same for AODs or they can use nitrox, real nitrox? Thank you. <laughs> they can use ni real nitrox. Um, in, 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 the, in the sense that you've just asked it there. So they can use nitrox in a way that sports divers can use nitrox only without the mandatory decompression. So they have basically the same lessons. And if you haven't already done so, I'd encourage you to, to, to download the instructor manual and have a read through it and, uh, and you know, familiarize yourself with, with what's in there. No, no problems at all. I know, I know, um, David, I know you've, you've you've got your hand up. I'm going to go to Ed, who hasn't had the chance to ask ask a question yet. Yeah, carry on, mate. No problem. Thank you. Oh, uh, good evening, Don. And, uh, nice presentation. Um, not a question, but to uh, give you some support. As you're aware, I'm a member of council, and uh, we were asked, and one of the questions was, why did we actually um, direct NDC to develop this type of course? It came over a, over a period of time, um, so it wasn't done overnight. A number of years debating whether we should do this or not. However, we need diversity of income for the organisation to survive and keep your membership fees down. Um, and also, oh, over 10 years ago, uh, the organisation changed from um, all training being done in branch to the individuals being able to choose where they do their own training, whether it's in a branch or a centre or with the regions. And that was the time when the lead instructors were brought in as a as a, a type of role. So this is really a progression, but it's just taken such a long time to come in. Um, but we think that it's, it's going to be a great benefit, not only to uh, our income, with some income coming in from centres, but it, it gets the word of BSEC back out to the world. Um, we're getting a lot of inquiries now from centres that have shunned us for the years, who are now interested in running our courses, which gives them experience of what our divers can actually do, so that when you go on holiday, you're not being constrained by being confused with other agencies' um, standards and things like that. So. Um, it did come from the top. It's not something that we decided overnight. Uh, we had many discussions over the name and eventually decided just swallow and bite the bullet. And at some point, we have to look at what do we do with advanced diver? Um, will that provide you some sort of support, Tom? Yeah, no, I really appreciate that, Edward, and thank you. Um, um, and it is, it's really nice to, to have a council member on the, uh, on the presentation. So, so thank you very much for that. Um, and uh, you know, I'm sure you'd echo my thoughts that if, if people don't like the direction the organisation's going in, then they should they should they should go and commit their time and effort as you do to uh, to, to to council. Um, yes, we had four positions for uh, council this year. We had three nominations. So um, unfortunately, yeah. the nomination period is closed for, the, for this year. Oh yeah, for this year. Okay, David, I'm going to come back to you now. Um, thank you for your patience. Yeah, I'm just being honest with you. I think it was Ali who brought it up. Um, to me, this looks like we are bowing down to the way Paddy are doing things, going very commercial. And surely, as an organisation, BZAC, 
you know, we are supposed to be the best diving club in the world, basically. Like, you know, shouldn't they meet, be meeting our standards? I'm a bit concerned about these rescue skills not being involved because when people do do the rescue skills, it builds confidence up and everything else. By the way, Dom, I'm chairman, well, I was chairman of the Cornwall Divers in Cornwall and I do the Kino weekend as well, mate. Um, and it's just one of the concerns that uh, I've got. You know, all these skills we do builds confidence. And if somebody just going on doing a dive, doing a dive, doing a dive, and they do have an incident, like and whatnot, then I just don't know where we're going to stand. And I'm talking about being in British waters. And I've just come back from the Maldives as well. And I know it's like diving over there. It's like diving in gym. Totally different diving altogether. And that's all. I just want to back Anne up a little bit on that. You know, no. I have got concerns about it, mate. No, no, and that's, and that's fine. Uh, you know, and, and you're not the only person who's expressed those concerns. So, um, you know, you know, I thank you for being so forthright. The, 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 the view was that, that we believe that the risk is tolerable. In, in the same in the same way that ocean divers only have limited rescue skills and we believe the risk is tolerable there as well. Mm. Yeah, well, we'll see. Right. Um, I, I'm not seeing any more hands up. Uh, lots of lots of uh, chat, which I've not had time to read, unfortunately. But no, I'm me, gonna, me, me. I'm going to save it. So, so we'll do in there. Oh, oh, Steve Betterson, I can see a hand up there. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Congratulations, Dom, on your appointment. By the way, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think I think this course, I think I think it's great for BZAC centres. Um, and obviously BZAC Egypt as well. Um, you've obviously not admitted, but you, you've, it's a commercial decision that's been made. And I think for, <clears throat> excuse me, and I think for sort of the, uh, from that point of view, I think it's a good, really good idea for the centres and, and, and BZAC Egypt. Um, people have said obviously different things tonight. Um, do the clubs not do? From from my club, I've been DO and TO stood down this year. Um, we obviously have an intake of of have a go. We have our have a go night and our tri divers. Um, we're talking about um, advanced open, open. Sorry, I'm saying open water now. Advanced ocean diver. Uh, a yeah. lot of guys here are saying uh, are worried about the uh, certainly the rescue side of things um with these uh, advanced ocean divers not having that skill but do the as us as a club we do ocean diver and then you know a couple of weeks later we go straight into uh, sports diver do you guys not do that in you know in the room sort of thing I suspect it probably depends on, um, you know, every club is different, isn't it, Steve? Some people, I'm sure, do do that, and some people do, you know, have the opportunity. But I think there's quite a lot of people who who aren't able to progress quite as quickly as, as they might want to. Um, and, you know, uh, this is, there's nothing to stop people carrying on doing the route that you've just, you've just spoken about, but this is, this is an option if, if it's useful for them. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, with David saying about, you know, he's worried about the about the skills, um, you know, with the sports diver. Uh, sorry, with the uh, the guys that are doing advanced, not having those skills. You know, it's within the club, within a club. So I think it is more. I think it's more. This is more geared around centres and, you know, with with the new sort of BZAC Egypt, I think it's more geared around them being able to sort of uh, deliver more intense lessons. Um, but as a club, certainly as us, you know, we meet every Wednesday and sort of do a lecture every Wednesday. Yeah, Just, as I say, you know, different people will, will have different perspectives. I've certainly had quite a lot of people in, in clubs come to me and go, this is brilliant. We think it offers us some real advantages. So. You know, we're not a one-size-fits-all organisation, are we? We are. We are a quite a broad church, and hopefully, this this sits sits in that. So, um, 
If you're happy there, Steve, I'm going to move on to, to someone cool? else. I've got a couple of hands popping up. Okay, uh, I've got Aid C. Not sure if that's Cadman or Collier. So obviously the better one. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Dom? All right, mate. Hello, Aid. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Just a simple question for you. Um, uh, maybe I can answer it for the benefit of other people as well. Um, does it actually conform to an ISO standard or is it like an interim? Because obviously it's, it's equivalent, as you're saying, really, in a sense, like on par with advanced open water. Um, but obviously it's got more built in. I'm just, just wondering if, it, you know, if it's got that sort of prestige of having an ISO standard there assigned to it or? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, and interestingly enough, neither does Sports Diver. Sports but, Diver uh, is only aligned to the Nitrox Diver, I say, mm. which is odd when you consider it's, you know, it's one of the qualifications we consider to be our absolute best. Mm. Um, so, uh, so no, unfortunately, no, there isn't an ISO no. assigned to it. Okay. Just a general question. It wasn't a knocking question or anything like that. It was just more, just a, no, no. as it were. But no, thanks. Thanks. Cheers. I've got um, Andy Walters asking a question. Yeah, I don't. <clears throat> it's more a uh, sort of response to, to Steve's question, sort of to the room kind of thing about uh, you know he, he, he sort of uh, said he, you know this is more for centres and and you know I, I think everyone's got a bit of scepticism about this course. I think we all have. I think we've all used to the traditional way, but I can certainly say that you know I'm the training officer of Ponty at the moment. I've been the dive officer, um, and I think this is this, this offers clubs some real benefits as well as centres. I, I do agree that the centres will like doing this as well, and it, it definitely will be good for them. But I've certainly got three ocean divers at the minute that refuse to do sports divers because of the rescue skills, because they do not want that responsibility. They do not want to do decompression. They don't want to learn about tables more and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but would love and will probably will do this course because it will give them the extra depth and it gives them the DSMB skill as well, which, you know, any skipper who works in the UK will require um, their divers to, to be able to use the DSMB. So I know personally from, from our club's point of view, uh, this is going to get used. Um, this is going to be something that we're going to have to offer. Um, and I do think uh, it, 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 you know, it can be used. And the other thing is, is people going through sports diver. Sports diver can take a long time. Uh, and you know, if you're started training somebody in the winter and you get the ocean diver done, you know, the, the dive season started before the finished sports diver. And at the minute, if you're doing full sports diver, you're not qualified on anything until you've done everything. Um, whereas I think this, you know, it, it's a nice interim. They can get some basic dive skills. You know, DSMB. I think I don't think there's anybody in the room that would say that that's not, you know, pretty basic, you know, for, for UK diving, it's essential you can use one of them. And to have this opportunity to say, right, okay, well, you know, maybe even for an extra 12 and a half quid, um, you can get signed off so you can actually use that and have a, you know, have a qualification that you can show to a skipper or you can show to another group that you want to go diving with and say, I am proficient and qualified in using that particular piece of equipment. So, yeah, just just from my point of view and as, as training officer of, a, you know, an active club, I, I think... You know, it's, I, I do think it's not just for for centres. I think there is the opportunity. It's like I say, if it fits your club and if it's what you want to do, I do think it is a useful tool. OK, well, well thank you. Thank you for your feedback, Andy. That's, uh, that's, that's really appreciated. I, I think probably, you know, illustrates the point that, that we're not a one-size-fits-all organisation and, and, and different things work, work for different people. So, um, you know, hopefully it'll, be, it'll work for you. And I'll, I'll be really interested in any feedback when you, when you start delivering it. Um, or if you start delivering it, I'm going to move on to Valerie uh, Gunn now, please. Hi there. Can you hear me OK? Yeah, loud and clear. OK, thanks. Um, I've um, just wanted to reflect on just a bit of experience within my club or, or not experience as such. Um, looking at this new course coming in, I'd spoken to um, Jim Watson about three, four weeks ago, concerned about some of our paddy crossovers and where they fitted within our club. and how we would manage that. And he said, watch this space, there's an announcement coming. I can't tell you any more about it, but this is what he was talking about, which is an advanced ocean diver course. So we've got about three scenarios just now that I'm giving thought to. And one is a paddy um, advanced open water diver who's done enriched air training, which is at Nitrox. Um, currently, yes. as an ocean diver, doesn't want to do sports particularly, um, but this would be a good interim course for them to do and maybe later they might consider the sports diver. We've got a 15-year-old lad who's a paddy open, um, open water diver 
Again, I think I would be suggesting this is a good route for him as a stepping stone. And then we've got someone currently doing sports, well, completed lectures, waiting to do his um, drills, but is saying he'll go straight to sports. He doesn't see a benefit of doing the advanced ocean diver. I suppose we're getting quite close to just running a training weekend and getting going with that. I think another course puts an additional burden in some ways. Um, I'm training officer in terms of another range of training to look at, although it is the drills are part of what we're doing with the sports diver training in many ways. Um, I'm just wondering after COVID, we're just getting going, how other clubs are managing um, with their training weekends, getting instructors, keeping an enthusiasm up. I mean, once again, you know, the kind of feedback we get in, in headquarters is, is, is mixed. You know, some people I think are finding it really difficult and other people are managing to get going. Um, you know, what I would say is anybody who is finding it difficult, if you need support, please, okay. please consider your regional coach. No, I've already emailed and spoken with them. Yeah. Brilliant. Or, you know, if you don't, if, if you want to, then clearly you've obviously spoken with, with Jim there, Valerie, but, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in headquarters, we, we hope to uh, to be able to help you as well. Right. Thank you. All right. Uh, okay. Thanks. Thanks for your comment there, Valerie. Appreciate that. Uh, I've got Danny Holden. Hi, Dom. Um, yeah, I just wanted to sort of bolster what um, Andy was saying earlier. Like, I think this is a really good course for um, people that aren't wanting to progress onto that sports diver because I have found people in the past with, um, yeah, that reluctance due to the responsibility of rescuing people at a sports diver level. But having the um, DSMB skills and the NAB skills are obviously massively clubs the amount of ocean divers i see that want to go out and explore but they haven't got the navigation skills they haven't been trained you're cutting in and out there danny i'm not sure if that's the same for everybody but but i missed the most of what you just said there i think i think you said that you you the dsmb and navigational skills you thought would be useful for ocean divers um who, who you know who aren't you know able to complete all the sport diver stuff yeah that's right brilliant okay well well thank you for thank you for your input as well um, you know, it's appreciated and, and builds that kind of thing that, you know, it's, it's not going to suit everybody, but it is going to be useful for some people, which is which is obviously great. I've. Um, I've I've ended. Oh, I don't see any more hands up. So I'm assuming that everybody has uh, has, has had enough of, um, of this or as we, we've, we've kind of covered everything, in which case. All I'd like to do then is, is say, well, thank you to all of you for taking your time to come along and, and listen. Some great questions. I really appreciate the feedback that we've had, you know, really varied feedback. That's important and is good. What I would say, though, is, is down the line, if you think about something, please get in touch with me. If you uh, find something in the manuals or you see something or, you know, you've got a thought, then once again, get in touch. And, and that kind of feedback is, is, is really important to us. So, uh, so thank you. And on that note, Dom, just quickly, what's your email address again? It's domr at bzac.com. So Delta Oscar Mike Romeo at bzac.com. Cheers, pal. Thank you. No worries at all. I'm going to uh, I'm going to close it all down then. Thank you. Yeah, well done, Dom. Thanks a lot, mate. Thank you very well much, Dom. Thank you for your time. Thank no you. problems Good at night. all. Cheers, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, mate. Bye.